Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be starting a brand new series looking at a old time classic. The game that we're going to be looking at today is Close Combat 2, A Bridge Too Far. I think the pinnacle of the Close Combat series, originally released in the late 1990s. Uh, the game has been fixed up a little bit so that it runs on modern operating systems, and you can actually purchase it via GOG or Good Old Games. Uh, that's GOG.com. If that's something you're interested in doing, uh, totally legitimate license and all that. It's uh, uh, they, you know, they work with game companies to get uh, the rights to these particular games, and then they work on uh, enhancing old games so that they run on modern systems. This is a real-time tactical combat game that also has an operational campaign, and I think that's what really has it stand out uh, is this aspect of being able to fight tactical battles across. Uh, different maps and then having those uh, tactical results directly influence the operational sectors in Nijmegen, Arnhem, or Eindhoven. Uh, this is looking at Operation Market Garden. I've been listening to Cornelius Ryan's A Bridge Too Far on um, Audible and have really been in the mood to play something that looks at the Market Garden campaign and I think to this day uh, Close Combat is the best game to ever look at that. So we are going to be playing the Grand Campaign. I did actually live stream this on my channel last night, but I didn't know what I was doing at all. And so uh, I did want to go ahead and uh, just to start a new campaign for the sake of the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we'll probably continue our, our campaign on Twitch uh, where we were. We had some interesting heroics with a flamethrower taking out an entire enemy uh, squad. We had an individual member of a recon section wiping out an entire enemy infantry section all by himself but we also had a lot of really boneheaded decisions by me so with that being said we are going to play the grand campaign uh we're going to name this uh thg because that's me and we'll jump right in you can see you get a little bit of a briefing here that's kind of explaining operation market garden essentially this was an operation undertaken in the fall of 1944 when the allies were beginning to run to the edge of their supply lines and the uh allies thought maybe specifically montgomery thought maybe we can uh, drop paratroopers across these bridges which will uh, basically give us a uh, free uh, an ability to break through and across key rivers and into germany before the germans can blow these bridges because the paratroopers will take the bridges. Speed is essential. Securing the bridges along the route is your highest priority. If you succeed, 30 Corps will punch a hole into the German heartland and the war in Europe could soon be over. And so the idea was, you know, using the 101st, 80th, and 82nd American Airborne Divisions and the British 1st Airborne Division, taking key bridges all along the route, the British 30 Corps and armored uh, unit in the 2nd British Army would break through, uh, link up with these airborne units, drive across these bridges, and then turn into the heart of the Ruhr uh, in the fall of 1944 and end the war quickly. That was the idea, anyway. Um, meanwhile, the first battle in the campaign here is Arnhem Bridge. It's actually the Arnhem Rail Bridge. Um, so the Arnhem Bridge is the real prize that's in downtown Arnhem. Um, which is the northernmost objective that the first airborne is supposed to take. Um, but um, the Arnhem Rail Bridge uh, is an escape route. Uh, the rail bridge is the escape route for the Oosterbeek operation. If you don't secure it immediately, they'll have no place they can fall back. If you're forced to abandon this area, this operation will be canceled and your troops will be sent to help defend Oosterbeek. So Oosterbeek is kind of uh, this area to the left of Arnhem, which is the headquarters, I guess, for the 1st Airborne Division. Arnhem is obviously where the bridges are. We're going to be playing over here in this particular section, the furthest left of the Arnhem operation. So there's three different sort of operations. There's Oosterbeek, there's Arnhem, and there's Driel. Driel is where the Polish Airborne will land, I think, on day five. But um, in each one of these operation zones, there are different sort of red squares here, um, or rectangles, or I guess they, yeah, anyway. Um, you can see here Arnhem has five of them, Oosterbeek has three, and these are each a different battle map that you fight on and you attempt to possess uh, that particular section. If you hold that area, that's good. If you don't hold the area, then you could be defeated eventually. So you can see here, these are the five different Arnhem sections. None of them are currently in our control. Oosterbeek, you can see we control three of the four sections um, and, uh, and what have you. So this is the Arnhem Rail Bridge. It's the first mission in the campaign. We're playing as the British. You can see here we have a lot of Bren and rifle sections. This is a very difficult uh, per fight. The, the bridge gets blown within like two minutes 
of starting the battle. And the only way to stop the bridge being blown, I believe, is to take all of the sections uh, of the map or uh, to uh, route the enemy before the time is up. And there's a pretty strong German force on this particular battle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the support section here. You can see these are the active teams that we currently have assigned to us. But we have some points, requisition points, that we can use to reinforce ourselves. We have 11 requisition points for the Arnhem section, and then, uh, or I guess, five, 11 for this particular Arnhem Rail Bridge operation, five for the Arnhem sector. So the sector points can be spread across any of the battles on this um, area in Arnhem. Uh, the operations, I believe, are specific to this map. And so we're going to go ahead and spend 10 of those on a three inch mortar unit because mortars are very valuable in this particular uh, game. And then we're also going to go ahead, we've got six points left. I'm kind of tempted to drop one of our Bren sections and get a second mortar. Although it's kind of telling me not to do that. Well, we do have more of these units, right? I don't know why it says you can't requisition it back because it, it definitely looks like I can. Anyway, we're going to pull two mortar teams in here. We only have two total available to us in this in this first airborne unit. But we're going to pull two three-inch mortar units in, um, and then uh, we'll try and we'll try and see if we can't if we can't fight here. Um, units do gain experience. Troops do gain experience that carry over battle to battle. They can be awarded different medals and things like that. Um, and so it's uh, it's a pretty unique game where you can really build a connection to your troops. So go ahead and jump in here and continue. We're in the deployment phase here. You can see the map that we're going to be fighting on. There's two walls, the east wall, the west wall. There's an entrance to the bridge. Um, those are three sections that we would want to take. There is a two Arnhem section of the map, and then there is an approach and the rail bridge. And I'm not sure if taking the rail bridge itself would stop the timer or not. I'm really not sure. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to stack up on the southern part of the map. So just click and drag to deploy your troops. We'll deploy this mortar behind this tree line. Um, we're we're going to deploy what are these rifle, rifle. We probably want our Bren unit to provide some cover fire with its machine guns. Put our rifles in the south. We're just going to stack up and kind of try and swarm the enemy in the south. Brent Recon, they'll work their way up there slowly. All right. So our two mortar sections back here where we can easily keep an eye on them. We don't have any machine gun units, so our, our Brent units are going to kind of Play that role. Okay. All right, so we've got one recon section, three rifle sections in the south here, and a Bren section in support. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to order these rifle sections. First thing we're going to do is we're going to order them to sneak until we have a better sense of where the enemy is. And then we'll order our Bren section to support. Um, let's move this recon section north and then order these guys to sneak this way. Okay. And I think, how much ammo do we have? 30 rounds for each mortar. We'll drop some smoke on the entrance. And then also down here. In the event that there's German troops here, we'll try and cover our advance. And we'll begin. You can see we have 2 minutes and 24 seconds until the bridge is blown. That's what the timer represents. Jesus Christ. Was that an enemy mortar round that like blew up right on top of that rifle group? Ready. Well, we took a casualty already. G42. SS Reserve. Pound them both. 
This rifle section's already taken two casualties. Alright, so you can see the mortars are pounding these German troops behind this wall. I think I heard a third guy fall. Again, the Bren group. Right. So I think we drove the enemy back, or at least... We did something. here Are we still shooting over there I thought I ordered them to hold their fire they did just hit someone over there right, I'm gonna try and rush this wall with the troops on each section behind this smoke oh god they're getting lit up yeah, we just got wiped out there This is not going well. We're down to a minute before this bridge gets lit. I was hoping the mortars would pin the enemy behind that wall, but it doesn't really look like that's what happened. Troops back here by the west wall. Alright, so this guy surrendered. We've secured the east wall. We have a minute left. So we're gonna rush the west wall. Let's shift our uh, mortar fire up here. an MG-42 back there. Yeah, we are losing a lot of men. We've got 28 seconds. Make sure my recon section just got lit. The hope was that the mortars would break the enemy's morale. That does not appear to have occurred. Oh shit, don't do that. I'm just gonna drop a mortar on top of my own men. Oh, now they're dead. We need to pull back. Where are these guys going? They're running away? Why? Your squad is in good shape. All right, so I just asked for a ceasefire, and the Germans accepted. There was five seconds left before the bridge was potentially going to be blown, and uh, I just figured, hey, if I click the ceasefires button, let's see if they accept it, and they did. That might be a little bit gamey. I'm not sure, but in any event, uh, we asked for a ceasefire. Uh, the Germans agreed to it. We took two of the sections on the map. There are still four more. Uh, the bridge remains intact. So the southern edge of the map and the eastern wall are both ours. So maybe we'll be able to have some more success. Now, we did lose 15 men. The enemy lost 10. If we go to the details section here, we can see the Bren section here has one survivor. 
This rifle squad was wiped out uh, between KIA and wounded troops, Andrew's rifle section. Carson's rifle section is okay for the most part. Three survivors, one walking wounded, and one um, double. I guess this guy would be combat ineffective, but this guy probably would be would be back after the battle. Um, another Bren section pretty much wiped out. Uh, AB recon section wiped out, and then the mortar units are all okay. So that matters because we can choose how long we would request the ceasefire to last. The first battle here last is at 1,100 hours on day one. Obviously, speed is very important to winning this particular battle and getting to the bridges and taking them intact and taking Arnhem on the first day of the fight. Um, but uh, if we do one hour, we get less in the way of points or reinforcements or the ability to improve our troops. So um, I'm going to do four hours, which is the standard, which means we'll be fighting again at 3 p.m., I am worried that means we won't get to the Arnhem Bridge on day one of the fight. Um, I guess we'll see, but that's what I'm going to do here because if I try and push forward with the exact troops that we have, um, we're not going to have the strength we need to take the map. So we'll do three, we'll do four hours. And hopefully we can keep the rail bridge intact because that'll be a nice um, bridge to have. Meanwhile, now we're going to move down to Son, uh, which is in the 101st Airborne's area of uh, operations. It is a, ba a bridge, I believe, that was historically blown uh, by the Germans. And in this particular battle, we're going to be fighting a battle in Son Town. This is a very difficult battle, um, and uh, it's in the southernmost section. You can see this yellow line, I believe, represents the progress of 30 Corps, which is the Armored Fist that's trying to break through and get to all these bridges. So you can see they're reaching the bridge of Son on day one of the battle. Um, but uh, obviously if those bridges get blown, then it delays them and uh, leaves your paratroopers cut off for a longer period of time. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit continue. We're going to go ahead. We've got one 60 millimeter mortar. We have 18 requisition points available to us. Uh, we're going to get a, a second 60 millimeter mortar, which is eight points. Um, and then I think I'm also going to go with a 30 caliber machine gun. Um, hopefully that would allow me to suppress the enemy effectively. I mean, alternatively, I can go for more infantry um, or a sniper or something like that. Um, flamethrower would actually be cool. But that's 14 points, and I don't have enough for that. I feel like a flamethrower would be really useful in, like, assaulting buildings and stuff. But we'll go with a 30 cal. Okay. All right, so we are going to deploy our mortars to the south. And I'm not sure what the best way to go about this is because this is just kind of a pain in the ass of a, of a particular fight. Um... Moving through the town seems like a fool's errand. But I think, you know, what I've done in the past in this scenario is try and take the broom factory up in the northwest. And then also try and move down through the town. And that seems like a bad strategy that just is bound for failure. I think a flamethrower would have been nice. I think rather than split my forces, I'm just going to concentrate everything in the south. We're going to try and move up this road to the Mayor's House School Depot and Town Hall, keeping our mortars in support. I even think we'll move the 30 cal down here and I'll mount it in one of these buildings once we take it. We'll move these troops into this building first. We'll try and move this section up into this cover. I assume that's like a garden or something that might provide some cover. Or maybe maybe this hedge. Move this rifle section through this field. Actually, let's move this rifle, this bar section through the field too. 
the ad hoc rifle section can move up into this hedge. Move these bars down here. So we'll stay in this field, and that will maybe allow me to approach this building more carefully. I don't know. I haven't tried this before. Um, 30 cal also get into this building. Okay. We'll see how it plays out. I'm really bunched up if the enemy has any mortars. Really? We already took a casualty? Right here on the road, one of our riflemen? Team redeployed. Deadman is dead. Lol, what a name. does also look like there's enemy troops up here. Thought I saw some up here. We're gonna try and assault some Alf Klar unit. the flank of my advance to this field. Don't actually shoot at them. Casualties here. Assault that building. Smoke would have been nice. This is our ad hoc section. Two incapacitated, one hurt, and one healthy. G42 is just going to move down the street at us. Okay. Do that, please. Why is no one hitting any of them? They're literally just crawling through the open. Right, we got one of them at least. The two seem to be pinned in the open here. Got another one. So we wiped out that MG42 section. Hey, there's an 88 back here. Maybe go try and knock that guy out. God. MG42 back here too.
Go, 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 go. Use cover, you fools. Approaching the house from the northeast and the south. Get him. God damn it. Dude just got wrecked by an 88 shell. Take out that damn 88 before it wrecks us as we try and move through the town. No! Oh my god. I think it just wiped out most of that infantry section. Get into this house closer here. Move fast. I don't think there's anyone in it. 88 is just demolishing us. Mortar rounds are not falling out of the gate. They're probably firing blind from back there. I'm not sure if they have a spotter. There's one healthy rifle section here. That 88, that 60 millimeter landed pretty close. Now they're firing on the 88. So they should be at least pinned. It's still shooting though. Where are you? Oh, you should move on this way. Yes, Fucking A. Feels very much like um, Foy and Band of Brothers. Like, why are they swinging way out that way? I wish there was better pathfinding and like your ability to control. Where your troops go. Oh, the gun crew has fled the gun. Spend almost all of our ammo on that. Alright, so that Brent's or rifle section, which almost got wiped out. Get there. This bar section lost about half its men wounded. Apparently, that building got obliterated by mortars. I think there's still an MG42 somewhere around here. Sure, where? There it is. Alright, 
All right, so I've taken the mayor's house. I've taken the school. MG42 in the open. Hit him. Hit him as they cross the street. Get him. Nice. So that MG42 is out of action. Get him. That's the actual gunner. I can see it. Got him. Good work, man. Move into the depot. What's back here? There's something back this way. Can't really see what, but there's something. Got, oh, that's just the gun crew from the 88. So we've taken the depot. We are moving through the southern half of the town. Still this Schultz unit here. These guys are in pretty good shape. On your feet, soldier. Trying to assault the Schultz. We still have this rifle section, which is largely untouched. They've been engaging these troops in this building. Move fast to the town hall. I mean, if there's really no more enemy men through the rest of the town. take these objectives they might have troops in the north but I've only seen the one enemy infantry section still all of our mortars are out of ammo Let's see if we can get our 30 cal in this this is a three story building so presumably we might be able to suppress the enemy from there on bridge objective and then there's just one more objective to take I don't really have good intel on how many enemy troops are left here alive we did pound this whole area pretty heavily with mortars which may have reduced them you can also see the corner of the building did take a direct hit but there's still at least one SMG and rifle firing out of there, I can tell. So they do appear to here have some troops in the north. Not sure what. It looks like a Panzer Shrek unit over there. Not sure if they have any troops in the broom factory since we didn't send any troops up that way. a good deal of resistance here. I'd like to assault this unit, but I don't know where from. I 
No, there's a Panzer Shrek over here. Moving toward the broom factory. Moving through the open. This is dicey. Not too worried about the Panzer Shrek unit over here. Probably won't have a ton of firepower. Thirty kills getting in position here. Still got about half our strength, it seems to think. No Germans in that building. What about the northern most? Oh, broom factory's ours. All right, so every objective on the map is ours. We haven't ejected the Germans from the position, but we have taken all of the map. So what happens if I ask for a ceasefire? Does this count as a victory? Kind of annoying if I have to like... Oh shit. I just lost one of our riflemen. If I have to literally take every single... fare too well. Alright, I'm gonna have you assault this building. We need to rest. You need to rest? Oh, you guys are all real tired. Probably shouldn't send them into hand-to-hand -hand combat if they're all exhausted. Got that one. Got him! The battle ended because the Germans are routed from the map. The Allies gained control of the area and will advance. Allied progress, 30 of 30 by the end of the day. 18 Allied KIA, 22 German KIA, 20 era and 3 missing. 20 Purple Hearts. That's a lot of Purple Hearts. 4 Bronze Stars, 2 Silver Stars for our boys as we win the battle of the town of Somme. You can see here who won the Silver Stars. Bronze Stars for... Uh, the AB bar section, the one section that basically took all the objectives on the map, got most of the awards. Three bronze stars for the section leader, the, the sergeant, uh, the Corporal Jackson, Sergeant Caster, Corporal Jackson, uh, and PFC Zabuli. Uh, and then silver stars for Fortnier and Stallings, both privates, one of them wounded. Uh, you can see the two silver star men killed two Germans each. And one bronze star for Sumner, another private in that same section so that seems to be where all of the brass went the mortar boys they did their work three killed for this 60 millimeter mortar and four killed for the assistant of the mortar is that i, I don't know how the kills get awarded to that unit gi holmes apparently was a coward so was Air, but he was killed so no worries there yeah, that bar section, heroes, every last one of them. I don't know if the Germans got any iron crosses, but most of them died. It looks like there's a Panzer Shrek unit that had two men that survived. One of the 88 millimeter, two of the 88 millimeter crew members survived. Some prisoners, a lot of wounded. Nobody else was left standing on the German side, the 107th Panzer Brigade. And there's a victory for us. So, ceasefire period, probably just one hour, right? Because we need to fight the next battle. Of course, if I do just one hour, 
I'm going to go in with a pretty shot up command since we had 18 KIA. So I guess maybe we do four hours, which is the standard period. But yeah. Okay. So Sun, the, the town is in our control. The next battle on Sun, I believe, will be for the bridge. And then the next battle is going to be the Schindel Road. It's our source of supply for the troops in the Eindhoven sector until we've been relieved by 30 corps. It's up here. It's an LZ where they drop paratrooper or er, supplies in uh, via air. It's located between Vigel and Son. It's in the center of the 101st section, uh, but that will be for another time. So this is Close Combat 2, A Bridge Too Far, a 1990s classic. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know your thoughts. And to all the veterans out there, happy Veterans Day. If you're in the United States, if you're in England or other places, happy Remembrance Day. This is the anniversary of the end of World War I. And so many nations either remember those who fell or who served, uh, depending on your country and your particular holiday. Um, and in many countries like the United States, it went from being a World War I holiday initially to more broad you know, conflict or veterans. Um, not in the U.S. to be confused with Memorial Day, which is about those who fell, um, but I don't know all the nuances over in, in other parts of the world other than that a lot of the rest of the world refers to it as Remembrance Day. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts below. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.